Wrestling fans of the world, I am the real Bobby Munson. This is Papa Smokes, and you're watching Ring Respect Retro. And before we get into today's episode, we're going to ask you to go ahead and click the subscribe button, turn on the notifications so you know every time we release new material here on Ring Respect Radio and Ring Respect Retro. So this week, on the retrospective, we've got a classic match here once again for you, and I'm going to allow Papa Smokes to introduce the competitors and what you're about to witness. All right, Munson, the first one we got here is a tag team match from Japan in the 80s. It's Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid versus Tiger Mask 2 and Magic Dragon. What a classic we're about to see. So why don't we head on down to ringside so you guys can join us for that particular matchup. And here we go with this uh, matchup here. This is going to be the Dynamite Kid. We're paying tribute to him. Uh, recently passed away on us and teaming up with his old teammate, the Davy Boy Smith, uh, known to many as the British Bulldog. Uh, taking on Tiger Mask 2 and Magic Dragon. Now, what can you tell us about the com uh, competitors in tonight's matchup, Pop Smokes? I can tell you that Dynamite Kid was a very experienced wrestler in Japan. Uh, he had a number of trips over there with with many famous matches. Uh, I'm interested to see this one because it's got Davey Boy Smith as, as his partner, and for all the famous matches Dynamite Kid and Tiger Mask had, here we have them facing each other in a tag match. This should be interesting. Definitely should be. And yes, uh, unfortunately, that we lost the Dynamite Kid recently, a uh, superstar that many consider to be, you know, well beyond his time for what he was capable of inside that squared circle. Yeah, so tremendously influential. Uh, uh, it's easy to see uh, many wrestlers nowadays still uh, emulate the, that uh, very crisp, snappy style that the uh, Dynamite Kid possesses, and uh, I just find it a pleasure to watch him every time. And world-renowned as well, too. I mean, he, this guy got over in every territory that he ever worked at and stuff like that. I mean, he really had a gift that uh, needs to, I think, needs to be remembered by the modern-day fans here. I know uh, Dynamite Kid was never forgotten by the Japanese fans, too. Uh, I remember as a, as a child playing uh, video games in the old stand-up arcade, there was a, a Japanese-made wrestling video game, the first one I ever played, and the, the character that you were as the player was called Kid Dynamite, and had exactly those blue trunks, and uh, yeah, it was obviously based on Dynamite Kid. We see Davy Boy Smith entering the ring. Another uh, person that we lost uh, way too soon here in the wrestling community. Uh, somebody that I had an opportunity to meet growing up as well, too. Uh, very great individual. Was uh, proud to get the opportunity to meet him. And uh, great to look back on one of his matches as well, too. And even a lot of this stuff you're seeing here today is not the kind of stuff you used to see from David Boy Smith when he was known as the British Bulldog in WWE or WWF as it was known back then. I mean, his, uh, his style became a lot more reduced compared to what they allowed him to do in the Japan style. But he also got so hugely muscular and bulky too that I don't think he was as agile as he was in, in these earlier days. But uh, could we almost uh, fault that to the WWF style or the WWF, uh, what they wanted their guys to look like back then as well too? But, you know, not to, I'm not trying to rag on the dub or anything like that. They seem to have a certain image that they wanted to uphold in order to make it in their industry. You almost had to fit that image, and that's what uh, brought Davy Boyd to the physical size that he ended up getting to. Yeah, I think you're right, but I, I don't even think it was just the dub that had that... Uh, that uh, agenda going on. I know that uh, things changed with wrestlers' bodies after the Road Warriors as well. Once once they came out as such a dominant tag team uh, with those huge bodybuilder muscular bodies, that that, that definitely became uh, in vogue during wrestling during the 80s and 90s. Head styles obviously are going to change as well too, based on which company you're working for, which uh, country you're working for as well too. I mean. There's a large difference between what you'd see in a, you know, Japanese wrestling ring, a Mexican wrestling ring, uh, what you see in the UK or what you see here in North America as well, too. The styles definitely change. And, you know, there's also uh, 
different things to know when you get inside of a ring when you enter a different country, and not a lot of fans might know this in particular, but uh, certain moves are done a certain style, say, here in North America, and they might be done a reverse way in Mexico or Japan or somewhere else and stuff like that. So a lot of these guys have to become uh, accustomed to doing things different than what they're initially taught when they first enter the wrestling world. That's definitely a good point. And then look at these uh, Smith and, uh, and Dynamite, the two Englishmen that came over to Canada and North America to wrestle. Now they're over here in Japan on this trip. And uh, there's got to be a certain amount of uh, cultural wrestling differences as well. I gotta say, I'm not as familiar with uh, Magic Dragon who we see in the ring currently. I uh, hadn't really heard of him prior to watching this particular matchup. Uh, Tiger Mask, a little bit more familiar with some of his work, and his legend definitely has uh, carried on through uh, New Japan, even in recent times and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, do you know anything more about Magic Dragon that uh, you can share with the fans here, Pop Smokes? Yeah, not a whole ton, but there was a series of uh, masked Japanese wrestlers that went by the moniker of Dragon. We've all heard of Ultimo Dragon before and uh, Magic Dragon. Um, yeah, just generally known for a high-flying and uh, highly technical style, I think, most of those uh, masked Dragon wrestlers. Definitely, as you, see, as you saw just now, there's a nice series of uh, counters and maneuvers there from Tiger Mask. Definitely uh, showing that he's a very quick-paced individual and very sleek style. Looking uh, a lot more like what you would see out of the New Japan wrestlers of today and stuff like that. So uh, anybody who's a big fan of current New Japan pro wrestling, you know, I really recommend going back and watching some of this classic stuff as well, too, because you get to see an insight as to what led you to the, the you know, this uh, almost like revolution of New Japan pro wrestling coming to uh, North America and all across the world now. Yeah, I can guarantee you all those guys that are stars in uh, New Japan now grew up on a steady diet of Tiger Mask uh, matches, that's for sure. One thing that's a big difference uh, in watching the uh, Japanese pro wrestling as opposed to uh, right here in North America, uh, we're so used to the North American crowds, I mean, getting right into it, being very you know, obnoxious, loud, and right into things right from the opening uh, bell. Uh, in Japan, it seems to be a little bit different. Uh, even though this crowd does seem, you know, boisterous and uh, into things, uh, the Japanese tend to allow the match to unfold a little bit before they really start to get into it and stuff like that. It seems like they allow for the opening stuff to take place and there be a bit of silence out of it, you know, almost like a respect thing to the competitors involved. And once the match really takes off is when they start cheering and getting into things. Yeah, they're pretty polite for the for the earlier parts of the match. You'll see some nice uh, clapping applause and such like that after good moves. But uh, once it once it gets a little bit wilder, they they'll be loud as well. Great counter there from Tiger Mask. Beautiful double team work up to break that one up. Speaking of double team work, have a look at this one, Bob Smoke, right over top of the ropes. <laughs> and just absolute power. Those fans sure like that show of strength from the, from the big uh, North American wrestler coming over here. I just see a pile driver here. Kick out it once again from Tiger Mask. It also shows you how great the, the Hart family were as trainers to uh, training the Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid to be able to come into any ring in, in any promotion in the world and, and turn out a great match like this just by having solid fundamentals of solid knowledge of the business and uh, ring psychology and the rest of that. Uh, uh, just a testament to uh, Stu Hart and uh, his other uh, trainers over at the Hart Dungeon there that just producing 
fantastic wrestlers on a regular basis. It almost seems to me like anybody that Stu Hart ever trained or anybody that ever entered the dungeon, unless, you know, you were a victim of your own demise, you were guaranteed to have success inside the wrestling business because, I mean, they taught you every aspect of it that you needed to know in order to be a great success. And they produced not only some of the greatest in-ring technicians, but some great characters as well along the way too. Yeah, and I also think that it would teach you about uh, being tough in the wrestling business too. Uh, you weren't going to make it through the uh, Hearts training program and through the through the dungeon if, if you weren't 110% uh, committed to uh, being an excellent professional wrestler. You know that uh, no longer is the dungeon available for training, but there are still a... Uh, Few wrestlers, uh, especially in WWE currently, that were the uh, the last of the trainees to uh, Stu Hart's dungeon before it closed down, uh, including uh, Natalia Neidhart herself, as well as uh, not a lot of people know about Victor from the Ascension was another uh, trainee at uh, the dungeon. And we can see that suplex from the top rope is what uh, finishes it off here, and the Dynamite Kid, and British Bulldog, or David Boy Smith, sorry, are picking up the victory here. That was quite the, quite the fast-paced encounter, and what a matchup we were treated to there, Pop Sloan. Absolutely. And uh, some of these Japanese matches like this, too, just uh, don't tend to go for the dramatic, don't tend to uh, go for the interference and the run-in and such like that. It, you, you see a lot of clean pins in this, too, which is what we just saw. That's a wonderful matchup, and uh, hopefully a wonderful look back on uh, a little bit of the... Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, as well as an opportunity to have a look at the Dynamite Kid, Davey Boy Smith, uh, a lot of these great individuals that uh, we've lost over time here in the wrestling community. And, you know, I guess that is our hope here with Ring Respect Retro, is that, you know, we're both fans of wrestling, we're fans of pro wrestling nowadays, and have been for many, many years, and it's wonderful to be able to take a look back at what, uh, you know, what brought you up in wrestling, what brought myself up in wrestling, and share that with the world, and hopefully you guys are enjoying what we're bringing you each and every week. And, you know, if you have any suggestions as well, there's matchups that you guys have seen that we haven't done here on Ring Respect Retro that you'd like us to go back on. Uh, please leave us a note in the comments. Pop and Spokes and I are always con constantly checking those comments. We want to know. We want suggestions because we want matches to go back and watch ourselves and hopefully be able to bring to the world as well, too. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Ring Respect Retro. Pop and Spokes, why don't you let, uh, take the fans out one more time. Yeah, you just saw a great tilt of tag team match from Japan and uh, uh, Magic Dragon and Tiger Mask coming out on the short end of the stick with that one. But uh, you know that they'll be back for more and so will we with Ring Respect Retro.